Thanks to everyone that's joining. We'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. All right, welcome to Distance Learning with Common Sense. My name is Barbara Huth, and I am the Regional Education Program Manager for the DC Metro Region. Today, our guests are Leslie Lisey and Sharon Wooden from Fairfax County Public Schools, and they're gonna be discussing how to develop a student team of technology leaders by sharing how they started the PAW Tech Squad at their elementary school. As a reminder, this conversation will be posted to our Common Sense Ed um, YouTube channel, along with links and resources that are shared and discussed in our chat today. So let's get started. Um, super excited to introduce everyone to Leslie and Sharon. So hi, Leslie and Sharon. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little more about yourself and the school um, and organization that you represent? Leslie, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so um, my name is Leslie Lisey. I am the school-based technology at Poplar Tree Elementary School, which is in Fairfax County Public Schools in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, my school, we have about 650 students at our school, and um, uh, my job really is to support the instructional needs the um, of our and of our technology and te instructional technology needs. So I model lessons with teachers. I co-teach with teachers. I um, help plan lessons with teachers, um, and how they can use technology in meaningful ways. And hey. Sharon, go ahead, Sharon. All righty. My name is Sharon Wooden. I am the technology support specialist. My job is to support instruction by making sure all the laptops or devices are ready to go for staff and students and functioning. So I am excited to be here. We are so excited to have you both here and really excited to learn more about the Paw Tech Squad. Um, just in the last few weeks talking to both of you, I'm, I'm just super excited about the work that you've done. Um, so can you just get us started thinking about like how did the Poplar Tree Paw Tech Squad start? So I'll, I'll just go off by say, you know, the pop, the, top, the pod tech squad, really what they are, they are, um, they're fourth through sixth graders in our building. Um, there are 44 of them and they, um, this is, we're going on year five of having the tech squad at our building. Every year we have a different theme. We've been the, the tech squad superheroes, the lifesavers. This year we're the superstars um, and they support the technology needs of our students and our staff. Um, they're really our sidekicks and help us do our jobs. And it started actually, before I've been at my school for four years and it started the year before with Sharon. So Sharon's going to tell you a little bit how, how it got going. Yes. So again, we're taking things day by day and what we learned with the tech squad, it was something that we were constantly revising to try to do something better. So we started off in 2016. We were part of a pilot to model a new instructional model. And part of this model included one-to-one -one technology. So we were getting one-to-one -one computers for grades three through six, and then K through two had devices as well, and they stayed in the building. Along with all of that technology that was coming in the building, part of the recommendations were to build a tech team in order to help support with the things as far as um, running laptops back and forth or swapping machines and helping. 
while this is great at the high school level, at the elementary level, I'm looking at that document saying, how is that gonna happen? We don't have free time, I don't know. So I sort of pushed it back in the corner of my mind. December rolls around and I had the opportunity to go to a conference in Virginia and I had the opportunity to listen to other tech teams. And I started to see there were ways that we could do this at Poplar and make it work. We just needed to start small, and which is what we did. So in the third quarter, we brought some students along onto on the, the as one of our students says, the original tech squad members, um, they came along and started helping us. It was more of meeting during lunch. Um, they learned how to make how-to videos. I brought in our, our high school, our feeder high school. They already had an established team. I brought them in to show our kids how to do that. We learned about smart boards. We learned about peripherals. We learned about how to set up for testing. So nothing really big. Um, and I promised that it was going to get bigger next year. And that's sort of where Leslie came in and I kept bugging her and saying, we, we've got to do this. We got to, we got to make it bigger. Um, along that way path, I, the second year, one of the students kept coming up to me saying, Miss Wooden, how can we help you? How can we help you, Miss Wooden? And I kept saying, I eh, got it. I got it. You're so sweet. Thank you. I've got it. Um, and then what I like to call battery gate happened <laughs> and all, <laughs> all of our batteries or a majority of our batteries started failing in a lot of our devices. So I was scrambling and basically trying to keep a smile on my face and trying to support everybody, but it's sort of overwhelmed. And the same student along with um, her peer, and again, a fourth grader, they came up to me in the morning. They said, Miss Wooden, we really can help you. So the first thing that I noticed, they were helping me with the crowd. They were helping me with the students in the mornings, asking them for their information. If we didn't have a battery for them, super helpful. And that's when they proved to me, okay, I can let them do some things. I can let go of some control and have them help. That is so great. I love that battery gate. That's so funny. <laughs> um, so how how do students join the Paw Tech Squad? Is like how many students do you have um, interested each year? I, I would feel like this would be like a group that students really would love to be a part of. So yeah, the first year that I wasn't there, they had maybe like six to 10 kids that were a part of it. Um, and then when I came on, we developed a, an application process. And so basically if students wanted to join, they had to apply, fill out a form. We asked them to complete a digital resume. And so they somehow digitally had to show what they can do with technology. Um, we have a rubric with which we, get, we grade their resumes. And then based off of that, then we also interview them, ask them some questions and decide from there. Um, if we go through the years, you know, the second year we maybe had like 12 to 15, the third, and then th the third year we had maybe like 30. Uh, last year we had 41 and this year up to 44. So um, the process is really important for us because it helps us really decide, you know, who is going to, who really wants to be a part of the squad, who really wants to um, work to help others and to learn and to be digital citizens. And um, so we have, we have to limit it to the those that really want to do it. Um, we go in in the beginning of the year of the classes and introduce them to the process. We always say, you know, you don't have to be the best with technology. You don't have to have all the technology skills. Sure, that's a perk if that's something that that is that is a strength of yours. But really, you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to work with others. You have to want to help, and you have to be a good digital citizen and role model for others. And if you are, then the Tech Squad is a place for you. So that is that is wonderful. And I and looking at some of the things that the Pod Tech Squad has done these past few years, there's just so much impact that they're having um, within their school. Can you talk a little bit more about how um, the Paw Tech Squad has impacts on not only their, um, you know, their peers, but also the staff and the school community as a whole? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the Pod Tech Squad students are, they are true leaders in our building and students and staff know who is on the Tech Squad. Um, I love when I'll, I'll go to a classroom and the teacher will say, I asked all the Tech Squad kids in my class and they didn't know the answer. So now I can, can maybe you can help. You know, they know to go to them first, um, which is great. Um, they, uh, you know, we have them, they model lessons for us. So if I go into younger grade K through three class and I'm introducing a tech tool, I, if I can, I'll bring Tech Squad kids with me um, and they will 
they'll help teach the lesson. They'll help as students are working, they'll walk around the classroom. Last year, it was great. I went to a third grade class and I was um, introducing them to Adobe Spark, which is a tool they were gonna use for a PBL they were working on. Um, and one of the kids came up to me and he said, Miss Lacey, I, I think I know that you're a part of the pod tech squad. Do you think you could help me with something? And it just really like showed the impact that the kids do have and that, that their peer, like their students really do know those are the kids that they can go to that can help them. Um, we also um, last year started having the students lead professional development for teachers. Um, we had uh, three different, before before COVID hit, we had three different in-person trainings, one on Book Creator, one on Adobe Spark, one on Immersive Reader. Um, and so the, the students got a chance to collaborate with each other and myself and plan for what this PD might look like and then communicate in front of adults. And we had a lot of adults, a lot of the teachers showed up and whether they showed up because they really wanted to learn or whether they showed up to support the students, it doesn't really matter because both things happened. Um, I think it's just powerful hearing from students what they know and that they can teach others. Um, they also create a lot of how-to guides. They create videos. We have a Flipgrid where they'll go to and create little how-to, especially in distance learning where we have so many things we need to show kids how to do. And I need to see it from a kid's perspective, not mine. Um, so I have my own Flipgrid where I create videos for teachers, but if I need it for it to be student facing, it's great. It's to the point now I'll literally post in Google Classroom, hey squad, I need a video on Yesterday, it was how to log into ST Math, which is a resource that we use. And then within, I would say, 20 minutes, I had two different videos. So they, they love to do that because they know that that helps others, um, which is really great. Um, and then since then, like others in our county really know that they can they can also call on the tech squad to help them. So I've had mm -hmm. people reach out and say, can do, any of your tech squad members, have they made a video on this? Do you think you can have them do this? Um, and we we have. Um, I think most importantly, you know, they really are models for digital citizenship. We have uh, device expectations. K through six, every kid at our school has access to a device. And so we needed to lay out expectations for what it is that they should be doing on these devices, what's appropriate. And so not only do we have those expectations that we developed with the squad's help in all the classrooms, but we also had them help us develop a um, video showing what that exactly looks like. Um, and I think another thing too is, you know, sometimes we're not digital citizens and we make mistakes. So it was about three years ago, we had two of our tech squad members. They were not doing what they were supposed to be doing in class. They were playing a game in Google Slides while they were supposed to be listening to their teacher. And, you know, um, Sharon and I brought them in. We had a very honest conversation with them about you are members of the squad. You are role models. If others see you doing this, they're going to think this is OK. And the importance of integrity. And they wrote us an apology letter. And said that they learned, you know, they would not, they would not do this again. They understand the importance of being a tech squad member. And I still have that letter at my desk at school. And I look at it as just a reminder that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes as long as we can learn from them. Um, and that's really powerful to me. So. Yeah, that is so powerful. I also saw that they created a, like being a digital citizen on your learning management system on Blackboard Collaborate. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, that was last last year when we moved to distance learning, um, and we use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra as our platform, and we re we re recognize the importance of being a digital citizen there. So we use them to help us create this, like what are the things we have to keep in mind, and they were telling us the things that were happening in their classes. You know, or oh, people are spamming in the chat and they're typing all these things in the chat, and it's really distracting. So again, hearing from them is so powerful. And Sharon. Um I saw a lot of great things just of incorporating customer service mm -hmm. um, into the Pod Tech Squad. Can you speak about that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, customer service is a big one for me. It's part of my job. I support, well, I mainly supported teachers before COVID and before one-to-one, -one, and now I'm supporting students and teachers and parents and everything else. So I had to adjust my support model. The One of the first um, lessons that we do is customer service. I want those squad members to learn how to talk to their peers and how to treat their peers like they want to be treated and how it feels when someone is able to teach you something and teach you how to do something. It's teaching someone how to fish. So that's one of the first lessons that we have every year. Our returning squad members love to come back and help with that lesson in particular, um, which is kind of awesome. That's great. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we were talking last week, we were also talking about just the growth that you've seen um, with your students. Do you have a story that you could share with us about, um, you know, an example of that growth over time? 
Absolutely. Again, I think that that's the most impactful part is seeing them grow and seeing them become more confident. We have we had a student or we still have her student. She's in sixth grade now. She came to us during her interview in fourth grade and said, I have a tool that helps me read. I want to show people how to use this. That's one of the reasons I want to be a part of the tech squad. I want to do that. And we said, oh, that's awesome. We'll see. Love it. She, by the middle of the year, last year, she came to us and said, hey, Miss Wood and Miss Lysie, there's this cool, there's this cool tool that I found. And I want to show you, can I present it to the teachers? She showed us. It was um, Microsoft Immersive Reader, showed the teachers, and then proceeded to show her classmates. And her impact was so large that the county decided to come out and film her. And one of the first things that she said was, hi, my name is Emmy and I have dyslexia. And owning the fact that she's not different, she's, she's Emmy, she's still Emmy and being confident in being Emmy. And yes, there are tools out there for her, but they're tools that can be used by anyone. I love that is so empowering. And um, we're sharing Emmy's story in the chat as well, if you want to check it out. Um, but let's move on to like, what are you working on now? Because a lot of the Pawtech squad really started off in person. And you know, now that we've transitioned to distance learning, how is the tech squad continuing now that you're in a virtual environment? And, and you're also not even at the same school anymore. So how are you doing this? The virtual environment almost helps with the fact that we're not at the same school this year because uh, Sharon can jump in to, uh, you know, into our meetings. But we do we have a weekly lunch bunch um, right now. Every Tuesday we meet and they know it's Tech Squad Tuesday and we come there and we try to, you know, we play a game. We have fun. We um, try to maybe teach them a thing or two. It's only a half hour. We know the kids are on their screens for a lot. So we offer some optional meetings kind of later on in the afternoon where we develop different things. And um, one of the students came up with, they wanted to really start a blog. And so we now have a blog that we are working on. It's, uh, we have our first post that we are ju we just put up and um, they have big plans for this. So it's trying to manage, you know, what, can, what we can actually get in in the time we have together, but they wanna be able to share different tips, different experiences. They we're calling it the 2020, 2021 experience and what kinds of things happen um, as we are learning virtually and as we transition to in-person. Um, and so the first post we have up is how to be a digital citizen and also elevate your portrait of a graduate skills. So together we collaborated and wrote that. Um, it, you know, we, we have to be creative. It's not the same as it was for sure, but it's also so important. And so it, it's gonna have to keep going, even if Sharon and I are apart. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, some of our students have moved on from the Pawtech squad as well. and they have made an impact not only for Poplar, now they're helping their middle schools and their high schools with the same lessons and those same digital citizenship lessons and making how-to videos. A couple of our students begged for one of the middle schools to have a tech squad. And since then he's a seventh grader now and they have a tech squad and it's kind of awesome. <laughs> So I know that um, we're talking a lot about the tech squad <laughs> and obviously we are the adults that work with the tech squad. And if we had our way, they, they would be here talking. And so we do have a video that um, we met with them and kind of asked them things that they wanted to share with others about what it means to be part of the squad. Um, Cause we can talk all day, but really it's their voices you want to hear. So absolutely. And you're going to hear from Emmy too, in this video, Emmy, the one that um, talked about who has dyslexia. And so she'll talk, she'll talk in the video as well. The reason that I joined the Patek Squad is because I'm new at Poplar Tree. I wanted to help people, I wanted to get to know them better, I wanted to work with them, and I wanted to make friends. So why did I join the Tech Squad? Well, I wanted to share my technology experience and my knowledge with other Tech Squad members. And if I joined, they could share their experiences with me, and then I can help more people with technology. A friend of mine had approached me and told me all about why I should join the Patek Squad. It was, and still is, a place where I can be a leader as well as help others and give back to the community. Walking in for the first time, I was very nervous, 
but now the Pod Tech Squad is not a place where I'm just another member. It's a place where I'm part of a community that is always working towards doing what's best for others, and that's why I love being a Pod Tech Squad member. The reason I wanted to be a part of the Pod Tech Squad is because it is a positive environment where you gain real-world knowledge with having fun. And in remote learning, the knowledge I have gained in Pod Tech is even more valuable than ever. Pod Tech Squad changed my whole school experience. It's not just a club, it's a family. So, um... When I joined the tech school, I thought it was just going to be a team where you do assignments, collaborate, projects, the usual. But then when I joined, I figured that it wasn't just a team of students, it was a team of friends. Where everyone would be nice to each other, we would have duties, we would get donuts. <laughs> what it does is it has weekly meetings where um, you can learn new tech tips and help other kids. You can create videos and help people with tech and how to use different tools like Flipgrid, Wixie, and all different other tools. Students on the tech squad have opportunities to be leaders and teach teachers, the opposite of what normally happens. Two years ago when I joined the tech squad, I finally found something that I was proud to be a part of. The year before was difficult for me, and being asked to be a part of the squad changed my attitude towards school. Last year, I told my tech teachers about a program I had discovered and asked if I could teach the teachers in my building about it. I was so proud to know that I was actually helping other kids. Technology doesn't always work the way you want it to, and we're here to help with that. One way that we're helping students and teachers here at Poplar Tree is by starting Poplar Tree's first ever blog. Here, students and teachers can find tech tips, weekly updates, and participate in blog posts. I know that adapting to distance learning has been hard, but I think the PAW Tech Squad has made that change easier for so many people. Well, keep it calm and fun. Find ways for the students to connect to each other. Spice it up. Give students a way to be a leader. Not all of them can be the best in their class. Give them a way to feel like they've done something for the school. Tech Squad has given me a big confidence boost. My advice for making a pod tech squad at your own school is to just go for it. The best things in life come from when you work hard for them. And pod tech squad is a, is a great symbol of hard work and dedication. And it's a reward to see yourself and the people you work with help people in need. That was such an inspirational way to end this week. Um, so before we take some questions from the audience, um, Sharon and Leslie, are there any top takeaways you wanna share with everyone that joined us today? Absolutely. I think our first takeaway is start small. Again, we started with about 12 students and now we're up to 44. Um, don't be afraid to revise and make changes to make sure things are working and fits your and they fit your school. The I would say our second takeaway is make sure that you elevate the student voices and make sure you are listening to their needs. They can teach you so much and help you shape your instructional practices or help you support your customers or whatever it may be. Um, just with their ideas. So it's okay to listen and okay to let them lead. And I think our third takeaway would be just to remember that like it's, it is all about relationships. Um, I think um, Emmy said it herself, you know, it, it's a place where you belong. When, when I heard kids saying to me and multiple kids have said it in multiple settings, you know, we're like a family. It's coming into the tech depot, which is the office that Sharon and I used to share where we were, that's where the, the magic happens. Um, <laughs> you know, to make, that they walk in there and they feel like they're home. That's what means so much. And so it's just about making connections. The squad is a way to for us to really connect with them, to learn about them, for them to, you know, oh, yes, it is about helping others. But through that, there's no pressure. It's, um, it's fun. And um, 
and we just we love it. And you know, even even without Sharon being at my school now, and we're very fortunate that we have the relationship we do to collaborate. And I'm very fortunate that I have um, another colleague, Kim Kelleher, who is also now starting to help me lead. And um, again, because she sees the importance of the relationship and ready to step in. But our, Sharon and I's collaboration is never going to stop. And we look forward to when our tech squad can maybe help her school start a tech squad and help her students through that too. And so we can continue to grow. Yeah, relationships are just so important right now. And you're keeping these relationships with your students. Um, you you have students now that are starting their own tech squads, right? In middle school and then even in high school as they're you know going through their education career. So I wanna thank you both so much again, Leslie and Sharon. We do have a question um, from the audience. So what kind of things do your pod, um, squad students do in the future? What are some opportunities that this particular, um, you know, that the Podtech squad gives your students? So what, what do they do in the future? Um, you mean when they leave us? Maybe is that what the question is? Yeah. So so I, mean, I do think that, um, as we said, so our school feeds into two different middle schools. I know Sharon kind of talked about this. Um, and one of those middle schools has their own, they're called the Padawans, but their own tech team. And another middle school did not have one. And so we love hearing from our middle school counterparts that, you know, our kids are going there and they're continuing to grow and continue to make a difference. Um, and then now our first, our first group of tech squad students is now in ninth grade and their voices are still being heard. I mean, one of our one of our girls, Jessie, she's she talks about how technology has impacted her life and how she has worked so, you know, how much she gained from from using technology at her young age when she started with us in fifth grade. Um, and now she's in, in high school. So and then again, the other school, Ashran talked about that didn't even have a tech squad. They now have one because our student Tucker that went there was like, nope, I, I, I can't go to middle school without having a tech team. I'm ready to start it. And our colleagues there have started it. And, um, and that's, it's awesome. So mm -hmm. we started lobbying for that on B well, Tucker started lobbying <laughs> on that way before he became a middle schooler, he was sending videos and letters to the tech support staff at his middle school, mm -hmm. um, asking if that would be possible to when he got there. That is so great. And I and I feel like just that momentum is going to build throughout the district. And Fairfax is such a large district, but just seeing, um, you know, your cluster schools as a model um, is really going to kind of just build throughout the district. And I'm excited to see that. There's also another question. So what is the first lesson we should think about when building up a student driven tech squad like this? I mean, I think we said it, start small. Don't don't think like, you know, we've gotten so big, we, we're, we're, but we're entering year five of having these students. And so starting small is by far the best piece of advice we can give to anybody. And then with that, it's okay to take risks and let go of control, like Sharon said. You know, she, I know it was hard for her to let go of that control and to have the students actually put their hands on the devices and help fix things. But by taking that risk, we learned so much and it's become such a bigger thing, so. You know, give the, give the students the, the opportunities to do things, to try things. It does not be perfect, but it it to them it means the world. Again, one size doesn't fit all. So we've grown, we've evolved, we've changed our the way we've done things because our school has grown, and the what we need our needs have changed. So just make sure that you're listening and looking at your school, and seeing what your school might need at the time as well. Thank you so much, Sharon and Leslie, for the resources, the expertise, the advice. Um, for everyone that's viewing today, this conversation will be posted to our Common Sense Ed YouTube channel, along with all of the great resources that were shared and discussed in our chat today. So thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.